Sasquatch legend or the Sasquatch as such will never go away. Even if it doesn't exist in the flesh, it is here as part and parcel of the North American or the world culture now. No one's ever caught one. No one's come close to catching one. There's never been a dead body recovered, not even a set of bones. And this is the only photo of one. That's if you don't subscribe to the popular theory that it's a man in a gorilla suit. But in the minds of avid Bigfooters, the Sasquatch is alive and well. And this is evidence. It's the Patterson photo, taken in 1967, supposedly of a female Bigfoot. Blurred, just enough for effect. Our search brought us to Vancouver, Canada, to the man who's been hunting Bigfoot longer than anyone else. René Dahinden is readying his houseboat for another stint in the wild. And because it is human-like, insofar as structure goes, physical structure, it would be mind-boggling. You know, it's okay finding a Loch Ness monster or other mystery type of creature. Fine, interesting, but this thing, because it's human looking, that will be the key. But we needed facts. Next stop, Portland, Oregon. An unassuming bookstore used as a front for the ever increasing Western Bigfoot Society. Tonight we have several interesting speakers, but first I want to mention that we've had a very recent sighting down in Klamath County. A sighting, and of a female no less. The female creature was a female with very large, naked breasts. Apparently it had a young nearby, but that wasn't uh, seen by the witnesses. Ah, so near and yet so far. But retired Deputy Sheriff Fred Bradshaw had even better news for the meeting, a personal encounter. When we saw the creature, it was standing with its face hidden. Uh, I estimated at the thing of being eight feet in height, uh, estimated weight between six and eight hundred pounds. The basement of the bookstore had everything. All of the sightings well documented, from the nuptials to the firstborn. Apparently, Portland is a Bigfoot hotspot. Now, right, is this the sort of place where you'd find a Sasquatch? Well, right in this very area, we've had several reported sightings of the creatures. According to Ray, they're out there. Not just one, but big feet by the thousand. A gene pool big enough to sustain the species. A species so sophisticated, it communicates with man using percussion. By, here, let me get a stick here. One of the things we found by trial and error is that the things sometimes, if you make a noise in the woods, they'll respond. So I would beat a log. Three, two, three, and I'd quit. And as often as not, way in the deep woods, you'll hear the same thing, sound come back again. And uh, I've had this happen before. I've mentioned it to other people, and they've had the same experience. So we think these things actually are communicating with us. Our walk through the woods took us across some fresh bear droppings, which begged the question... We know, obviously, what bears do in the woods. Do big feet do this in the woods as well? I think big feet do it in the woods also. We have several specimens that the people have sent in. And what sets them apart is their un unusually large size. Of course. And there we left Ray Crow to contemplate his last answer while we continued the search for some facts. This is the Mount Hood region of Oregon, home of the Bigfoot Research Project. The locals around here say this is Bigfoot country, so we're going bush to try and find out. Our guide was 69-year-old Irishman Peter Byrne. Our plan, to spend the night under a full moon in the hope of finding a Bigfoot. Byrne is being bankrolled by the tens of thousands and he says they're closing in. Money buys equipment, it buys technology, it buys time. That's what we have now. And actually, all the years that I've been involved with it, a lot of it was very amateur, um, searching and researching on my part. 
this is different, this is professional. I think we have a good chance now of, um, of finding one. Do you believe that there could be a Bigfoot out there now, watching, listening to what we're doing? Well, we just heard a coyote call. And is there something out there? There could be a Bigfoot 50 feet from here, sitting, listening to us right now. And with that in mind, we sat and waited. How close have you come, do you think, to a Bigfoot? Well, I've heard one call at night at two in the morning once, and that was half a mile away. I think I could best describe it as a screaming roar. A sound we didn't hear at all this time. Well, it's a little after 7 a.m. and we've survived the night, but no Bigfoot. There were a few strange noises though, a coyote and an owl. And as it turned out, one other unwelcome visitor. And that's a, an adult mountain lion, also known as a panther or a cougar in this country. How old would that print be? Well, the dew is in it, so it was made early in the night, so it's probably five or six hours old, going in that direction. <laughs> Should we be going in that direction? I'm, I'm inclined to go in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty harmless. So one little foot, but still no big foot. And that's where we left Peter Byrne, as we continued our search back across the waters to Canada, to the city of Victoria, where there'd been a sighting. But this Sasquatch wasn't going anywhere. It was still stuck firmly in North American Indian mythology, very likely where it's always been.